the the V cutter. And oh the, yeah, let's the, go the, to that. One. Yeah, the V cutter has been a cutter that's been around for a very long time. One of the inexpensive ones, Mike. Do we have? Do the, do the V cutter on the torpedo. Okay. Mike, tell them if you want to off camera why why it is that Mike seriously has kind of revolutionized the V cutter in terms of promoting it. Uh, we had a V cutter here that was like on the table, that was a table V cutter. That thing literally, literally got worn down. I mean, to the nub almost. It was so overused. People really love it. Mike's going to bring in right now. This is one of our um, this is one of our earliest cutters that we ever had here. This is from a company called Boston Cigar Cutter Company. I believe they're still in existence. They are not cheap. This unit itself runs probably in the five hundred dollar range, four to five hundred dollars, or even more now. How much more would you say? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. The thing about this cutter, I'll, I'll take it apart so you can see it as well. It has a very nice. That's pretty clean from last Sunday. It has a nice, nice mechanism in it that when you put the cigar on the top, all you do is simply push it down and drag the wheel. Not drag. Gently pull the wheel down. And it cuts this V cut out, but this thing is remarkable. I mean, this thing—it's it, still made in in West Newbury, Massachusetts. They're still made here in the United States. I'm not sure what the wood is. It probably is like a walnut or something like that. Um, but they do make a pocket one. I remember when we had it the last time. It was about $180, which was too pricey for the style of cutter that they had at that time. But when I go to the retail show in July. It's one of those things I'm always interested in looking at. And what are some new cutters? But Mike literally kind of, you know, promoted single-handedly promoted the V cutter to where a lot of people use it now. And Mike, tell them why it is that you like the V cut because you're really a big fan of it. I've only used it a few times, but why is it? What do you like about the V cut compared to a straight or bullet? When I was down at the uh, Camacho factory, I was smoking a uh, Bellicoso or a Torpedo, and um, I uh, was using a guillotine. Right. Um, and one of the master rollers down there actually pulled out his V cutter and showed me his V cut and explained why he uses the V cut of Bellicoso. Because all cigars are rolled with a center flute. And if you cut too far down on a Bellicoso, you crush that flute. But if you use a V cut, it opens up the flute so that you have a better draw. And, and what do you mean by a center flute? All cigars basically have a center flute. So like a center core? Center core. Okay. It's like a straw in the middle. Right. Basically, which helps funnel the, uh, the heat smoke up and down. And uh, most people on a guillotine cut the tip too far down, so they crush that flute. Um, and the only other way to smoke a um, Bellicoso is on the flat surface to do a bullet cut. Right. But most people can't stick the cigar that far into their mouth. And it's a very, un un for me, a very unusual and uncomfortable um, way to smoke it because the smoke directly goes into your palate. And some cigars are very spicy and it gets a little hot. Interesting. Now that so what you would recommend is doing we've got a, a cigar here, it's a Florida Oliva, and what Mike is saying is normally and the way that I've seen people do it incorrectly is where they'll take a straight cut like this. When I cut a you know, back in the day I remember we used to have guys come in here and they would do lectures and say, Oh, you should cut it like on a forty five degree angle or on the bias with the X axis and the Z and then calibrated ratio to the sun and the thing is, 99% of your guys that are going to come in here, they're not interested in, in even listening to that, let alone doing it. So what I always tell guys is start and cut as little as possible. Right, but most people cut it down to the finger. I have a guy that comes in I'm at least right one, once, a, once a week. I, can, I, I think you know, I'm not going to say his name, but I think you know his cigar. I'm just going to say he smokes uh, Maduro CAOs, and I will watch him cut it, and he will cut the cigar right here every time. And I look at it and I think to myself, why are you even buying a Bellicoso at that point? You're completely defeating the purpose. The idea of having that pyramid-like shape or where it's going into a cone is that you are, like as, as Mike said, you're funneling more of the smoke and the flavor into a narrower area. area. And people will ask me when, when they look at cigars as an example, uh, like I'll just take Oliva. The Oliva uh, V has, I don't know how many different um, 
sizes in that range. Would you say eight different ones at least, something like that? Eight to ten. Eight to ten. And people will look at it, I said, it's the same tobacco all the way through, but the amount of tobacco that they put in lengthwise and the amount of tobacco that they bundle will give each cigar a unique taste. Um, and I know you and I always talk about the illusion. Mm -hmm. We like the 68 and the 88, which is one of the first things we talked about. Same tobacco, but we just like a different size. So let's go ahead. Why don't you do the honors of cutting it with the V-cutter and kind of showing everybody what that looks like. Firstly, uh, as I said, you put the, the tip so you can't put it in any further. Cut it off. And the thing yeah. that's really cool is it's almost like it's, I don't want to say it's idiot proof because anything that you have can get crushed, but the thing is with any cutter, doing something, some people try to go really, really slow, and some people try to go too fast and they kind of jerk it. It's somewhere in between. It's a positive clip, and it's just one of those things that with time, people get used to it, they know how to do it. It does a really good job. I mean, it's one of those things. This is, by the way, the Zycar one. I believe it's just aluminum. I don't think it's titanium. I think it's aluminum. But they come in. It's really cool. They're anodized. They have all different colors. This is an anodized blue. I think we have a black. I know that there's a silver. Gunmetal. Uh, gun metal. They make a great product. And this one is, is pretty reasonable, too. I want to say it's something about, what, $30? Something like that? It's on there. I don't think this one... This one lacks a price. But they're not expensive. And they, like everything else, it's got that lifetime warranty, so it's a really cool product. Uh, I don't know if we have any other other Vs, but it's one of those other cut. It's just a great cutter. I think the other one, since you kind of touched on it, if you want to do bullet cuts right now, I'll show you one of the earliest bullet cuts that I ever saw. This literally is a bullet, and the company um, making it, they made this a long time ago. I don't know if it has... This actually just says 44 Remington Mag, so it, it is from a you know, a real uh, shell casing, if you will. Obviously, it's you know not a real bullet, but this one, the idea was that you would take the cigar and, well, here, I'll do it on the one that hasn't been cut here. So you'll take it, and as you put it to the cigar, you would twist it. The problem with this old one is, and you can't see it, but it is a rolled piece of metal. So it's not a single piece. I mean, it's a single piece, but there is an edge. The problem was if you did it the wrong way, it would catch and tear the cigar. So you always had to look at it and kind of make sure that you weren't tearing into the cigar. And as you did it, you had to turn it one way and eventually you could pull it out and it would take a plug out of the cigar. The problem with this was, is that then, after you've cut several cigars, how do you get the tobacco out? The only way you could do it was to stick something like a pencil in there or you had to go old school style, pull the whole thing out dump it, squeeze the unit back, and then make sure it went in place without cutting yourself again. And if you push it on a table enough time, it would get dull. This was this was back in the day when you could carry these on the airplane. You can imagine this day and age, carrying this on an airplane would not get He's go. got a gun. Yeah, he's got a gun, exactly. <laughs> you tackled and strip searched. Um, but that was really the first one that we had here in the shop. Um, John, have you ever had any experience? Do you like the bullet cut at all? I never use them. No, I don't. Uh, only, only because that reason I mentioned before is the tar buildup. Uh, that's just a personal uh, preference that I have. No, I don't really use uh, bullet cuts, uh, bullet punches at all. But uh, they do have their place. Yeah, and do. and people are usually that's all they use them for is just to every cigar they smoke. They always do a bullet punch. Uh, but personally, it, it's not my sort of thing. But um, very popular. This was another one that we carried years ago, too. This one kind of took care of the idea of having it, but it had some other drawbacks, too, and I'll just cut the same thing. Same kind of idea, but a bigger, bigger bullet cut. You, you push it in, and it takes a bigger chunk out, and it kind of cracked because I've already cut it once. And then it had this extractor. The problem with this one was that it had this cap. Well, if you put it in your pocket, the cap would inevitably fall off. Uh, you, I mean, if this one is so weak. This has got to be 15-plus years old. It's very, very old. This is kind of one, Mike brought this up. This is a disposable one. This has a very tiny hole. So if you're doing something like a ring gauge that's under 40, this would work. And they're not very expensive. This one is it's essentially disposable. You're not gonna sharp it up again. But that those are kind of cool. Then Avo came out with one of the, kind of the top of the line ones where it was a very smooth operation. This one has been, you know, it, it was in my pocket for years. 
and they, they came in a gold and a silver and a kind of a gunmetal. A great cutter though, the thing is still super sharp and all I'll do is just, I'm going to cut into the side here, which obviously you would never do unless you're making a flute, but you cut in here to the side and you can see when you cut in here, I don't know if it'll come out because it's not really the cap, but it does the same thing where it pulls a little plug out and then the extractor is just you twisting and it pops right out. I've never had any issue with this thing opening in my pocket. Some of the lesser quality ones, people would have an issue where they put it in their pocket and over time it would kind of unscrew and it would be rubbing against metal in their pocket. That wasn't a very good idea. Since then, other companies have come out with some really nice ones like Zycar, of course, as we keep going back to. We like their product because they, they work. This is 30 bucks, but this one is just a beast. You pull it out and it has a very large ring gauge and then you can close it simply by pushing it together and it extracts the bit of tobacco there. And then this is one of the newer ones, and this one's kind of interesting. This has a twist punch, is what they call this. This one is huge, but it has almost like a um, set of ball bearings that when you click, it kind of clicks like into place. Yeah, a ratchet is a perfect way to describe it. It's got a huge, lipstick. huge, yeah, like a lipstick. It's got a huge one, but this thing, feel how heavy that is. Yeah, that is solid. Uh, I really it's too heavy for me. I would not carry that in my pocket only because it is so heavy, but it would be cool to put that on a golf bag because it's got the key ring, someplace where you're not going to lose it. It's solid. It's quite heavy. I just want to I want to give a bit of a plug for Zycar as well. I, I, I think we're pretty lucky to have a, a company like the Zycar who's very committed to uh, cigar smoking and their products. Uh, the the R&D department really do a great job. They're, it's... it's uh, engineered very well the quality and plus their lifetime warranty it's uh, it's a relief to have a company who's very committed because we've had some times been in the past we've had a lot of products come in and out and, and but we never had a company who just really over engineered their products and and, uh, and took and care of you if it did happen to have a absolutely. failure absolutely it's uh, so uh, we're very proud to be a stockist of Zyka also uh, we do carry uh, a lot of the range that they do make here in the store, but uh, there is a lot of products that we, we cannot carry every product, but we can order any product of uh, that, that you wish from Zyka and have it in the shop here delivered. So, uh, yeah, very, very happy with these products. Yeah, I think it goes right there. There you go. Are you out, Joe? Yeah, All right, Yankee Joe's out of the house here. Oh, that's what I was going to do next. That's my next. I was going to show my personal one here. Well, that takes us to, we've covered the straight cut, we've covered you your bullet cuts, we've covered you know the Zycar, the newer style of cutters. <laughs> but what we haven't done is covered the scissor cut. What's the, the scissor cut? Which I is think that's right. Where do we have that scissor? Here. You have that scissor one? What, what I've noticed, this, the scissor cut here is more what you see in <clears throat> somebody's den. Or, or, or somebody, a restaurant. Yeah, or a restaurant or uh, uh, you would have a cutter at a, a, say, a restaurant where you could smoke and the uh, the waiter would cut your cigar for you and usually they would carry one of these because they're very elegant, it's quite a, uh, a good looking cutter and, um, and these cut quite well. It's the reason I like these, they give you a lot of control, especially if you're a newer person. Uh, people are, like John said, you're not going to carry this in your pocket because it is so unwieldy. But it does allow you to have tremendous amount of control. You can go slower with it. It will still cut very well. It, they make an excellent product. Um, and you know, we can show it with this particular cigar. So if you cut with it, you can see how you can just get right where you need it to cut. Your hand's not going to shake as much as if you're using something like a Zycar where it's like a spring-loaded device. And it allows you to just remove the cap. And it really does, it, it does do a good job. I'm not familiar with this particular one. Where did we get that one from? The one I really like is, I know it sounds like we're pumping Zycar, but we are. This is my personal one with a little uh, pickpocket device here, as they call it, where it just hangs on your pocket. The reason I like this one, though, it is folding. It's a collapsible one, and I carried this for many years in my, in my pocket. But the thing that's nice about this one, it also comes with some tools which a lot of people look at and they're not really sure what they are. They come with things like a little flathead, it comes with this little point where people say, oh, is that for your cigar to poke a hole in? I said, you could use it, but typically what this is for is to drain out your lighter. Uh, that's one of the things that people don't normally do, and we'll talk about that when we get to lighters. But every so often, you'll get a bubble in your lighter line and it'll cause the lighter to sputter. And by draining it out and then refilling it, 
with your butane, it'll allow it to perform a lot better. It also comes with some other little tools as well, like a little bottle opener and this little kind of uh, divot device. But this is a full-size scissors. And you can see the difference between this one and the other one. This one opens up to a much larger ring gauge. Um, and even though it doesn't seem like it would be as large as that one, my fingers fit a lot nicer or a lot easier into this unit. And let's see, so we'll use this one right here and you can see it's the same kind of idea. I, I have more control over this because it's my own personal one. And it just cuts off just the cap. As you can see, that's all you want to cut off is the cap that's on the top of the cigar. You don't want to cut too far down. The big cardinal sin, as we as we saw before, are these people who do this incorrect cut, which is sacrilege. I'm going to do it here, and they'll do this, and they'll cut. Not only you can see a couple things that just occurred. One, the cigar exploded. Two, it's starting to unravel because I've cut too far down, and that's the danger when cutting any cigar. Typically, be it a bellicoso, be it a pyramid, be it something that's like a straight, you know, Churchill size cigar. It's one of those things where people will get overly ambitious in their cigar cutting, but the scissor cutter can take care of that. These are great, and I think they're I think they're $30, something like that, and they are a great unit. Once you learn how to work with them, they are they disappear in the pocket because even though they look larger, they're very they're flat. They don't take a lot of space up, and it's a great product. I really like it. I've turned people kind of onto it the way I discovered it. We weren't carrying them in the store. I wanted to um, check one out, so I ordered one from a company, and it came in, and I've been a fan ever since. Mike just handed me this one. This is kind of the extreme version. This is something from Zycar. This is their really expensive. I think that's probably one, one of their top-of-the-line units here. It's about $350. Mike, why is it so expensive? What I don't... Is it... It's a, silver a, or? It's a, a titanium metal and silver, and, and it's the same price point as your cutter that you got at 250 So the price has gone up. Oh my gosh, so mine is no longer 250 it's right. 350 I guess I got in at the ground floor while the getting was good. So I think that pretty much covers it, but if you do have any questions, of course, you can send us um, an email at uh, info at libertytobacco.com. You can address it to either myself, Ben, or to Ozzy John, or to Mike Gallagher here at the shop, and any of us can answer a question. If it's on Facebook, which is a really easy way, you can of course leave comments down below. I'll or post messages. it up there. Or messages. You can also, um, I'll put it up on the Liberty page, Liberty Tobacco on uh, YouTube. We don't have a lot of people go to, the, go to our YouTube site for Liberty Tobacco as compared to our Facebook page. People really like the Facebook page because we'll do things like run special Facebook only Offers and so I, I encourage people to go out there and, and like our page, and if you can, you know, check out our website. It's not a full website that you would expect from a store like, um, you know, uh, JR's Tobacco or something like that. We are a we're two small shops here in San Diego, uh, up in the North County and, and down where we are in the Kearney Mesa area. But I think what people, if you've watched the other videos, you know that this is a shop that is like Cheers where. You know, it's very personal. People know you. So if people have a question about cutters and lighters, almost anybody in the shop, be it a customer or any one of the employees, would be happy, of course, to answer the questions. Well, great, Ben. Uh, <clears throat> great segment. And we learned quite a lot about uh, cutters and we'll, what we think. And uh, thanks for watching. And um, and keep your cigars lit. Keep the shiny side up. and As they say. Yeah, I guess that's it. So thank you once again for watching. Thank you.